there's a universe inside each of us. The Innerverse Podcast is your portal to that infinite realm of ideas. I'm Chance Garten, and I'll be your host as we serve up inspirational sound waves from the brightest minds with the highest vibes. And we keep searching for the empowering perspectives we need to create our greatest masterpiece of all, our lives. Welcome to the one within all, everybody. Back to the Interverse podcast. I'm your host, Chance. And today we're joined with by Davis Fund. And Davis is a seriously multi-talented dude. He's involved with <laughs> Festival production, an event called Beauty in the Backyard in Maryland. He's also co-founder of a very ambitious and positive organization called Meta Creative, which happens to also have a podcast associated with it, which David also helps to host. So there's a plethora of other things we could say about him, I'm sure, but we're going to find out a little bit more in this conversation. Oh, He was just telling me about being a musician, doing some ambient DJ sets at Cosm, which is Alex Gray's psychedelic <laughs> church in New York. So sounds like you get around and you're in some interesting circles and it's yeah. awesome to have you here. We've been wanting to connect for who the hell knows how long, but we're both yeah. busy and we made it happen <laughs> though, finally. So welcome to the show, man. Thanks for being here. Blessed to be here. Thank you, Chance. So tell us about yourself, man. I just did a little bit of introducing you, but that's all like stuff you do, but who is it that you are? Well, I'm a rebel by nature. I don't fit the grain really at all. Uh, I've honestly been kicked out of every school I've ever been in and I just get in trouble a lot. But my life has had a massive, massive shift in the past few years, um, synchronistically with uh, working on Meta Creative and how bringing this uh, community up off the ground has given me a revised um, purpose and fulfillment that I never imagined that I would even have in my life. Um, But I'm I'm actually at University of Delaware right now. I'm still finishing college. I had to take a few semesters, leave of absence to work. I actually lost my scholarships in freshman year because I just goofed off. I didn't really care about college too much. Um, You know, I thought I was going to just do my own thing. I'm an entrepreneurship major, a minor in Chinese, Um, but I'm more of a social entrepreneur. I don't really care about like you know, pure money profits and like monetary gain. I care more about social and environmental profit, uh, you know, benefiting the world and ourselves, helping enrich our own lives and uh, the lives of the people around us. The real goal. So, yeah, right. Exactly. The, the wealth is within. And, um, and so anyway, I, I, I spent some time away from school. I didn't think I was going to come back, but the entrepreneurship program here at UD uh, University of Delaware is, is uh, just outstanding. It's become like a second family to me. There's a lot more people working on social ventures now. Um, it's a really supportive community that I'm blessed to be a part of um, and has given me new hope. I went through a program called, called Summer Founders, which is a, basically an entrepreneurial accelerator program where we got to work on um, this idea of Meta House. So you mentioned our uh, community events organization called Meta Creative. It's actually pronounced Meta, but we just say Meta. It's a Pali <laughs> word. It's an Indian uh, sub, sub dialect. Uh, and it means it loving means, kindness, which is a yeah, really cool word. Right. Benevolence, goodness, loving kindness, just like goodness really to, to all beings. And um so this idea of a meta house is to essentially create a uh, a holistic frat house on college campuses. So people can still party and make connections, lifelong connections, while doing enriching activities like painting and dancing and cooking together and working on collaborative projects like music and podcasts, uh, instead of just feeling the pressure to black out and, you know, just to drink unnecessarily. I spent a lot of time doing that in freshman year. So I know from personal experience that it's not really that fulfilling. Um, and, uh, and, and, and was blessed to meet Dylan, a co-founder of Meta Creative, who uh, is not here with us right now, but has been just a beacon of light in my life, blessing me with the opportunity to get involved with these events. Um, the first event I went to four years ago, almost four years ago now, 
I just was like, this is amazing. I want to be involved. So I sent it from Baltimore to Brooklyn, New York. And uh, actually, I was supposed to play music that night, but uh, the party was so uh, amazing. <laughs> 400 people on a rooftop and uh, the cops came. So I didn't actually get to play that night. But being a part of, of, of that experience was was amazing. I, I was seeing people connecting, people laughing, dancing. Not a lot of people, you know, people had alcohol and stuff like that, but no one was really blacked out. I've actually, I've, I've really never seen like maybe one or two people, but I've never really seen anyone like completely blacked out on alcohol at our events, which is like a blessing in my opinion. Um, of course you have the stragglers, but it's not like you go to the bars or any party on campus for the most part. And it's just like, you're going to see a handful at least every time. So oh, yeah, especially in the college. <laughs> I mean, I went to university of Missouri, which seems like most of the people that went there, especially in the Greek community, not to cast any stones. I mean, this right, is just right, right. like common knowledge. The whole purpose was to get together and drink and like the gathering really had more to do with the substance use than any other mm, reason mm. of getting together. Yeah. I love that your intentions with your organization is to create a space for connection and like authentic human interaction. And yeah, some people want to drink to socially lubricate themselves. That's fine. But right. have you ever thought about like the ramifications of the substance though, alcohol, like this, it always trips me out that it's called spirits. And yeah. when you have enough of it, you're blacked out. Right. So your spirit is not even inhabiting yeah. your body anymore. And yeah. in alchemy, like ancient magical practice, it was, it got the name spirits because it was meant to like dissolve the connection between the spiritual essence of the thing from the physical thing. And they used mm -hmm. it to like refine and, uh, and, you know, get, things into a different mm. form, like extract stuff. It's an extractor. So mm. it's not that we should never imbibe if it's something we want to do, but we got to be aware that if we're vacating our vehicle, then mm -hmm. other forces then can come in and start to drive. And it, it's something that's just not well known in the, the community uh, of younger people, especially where the drinking yeah. is glorified up to the point that you're, uh, allowed to do it legally but most people yeah. have already been doing it for a while quite irresponsibly and it's hardly their fault i mean they're like led to it through advertising exactly. and all that and i can speak i mean university of delaware last year actually i think two, two years in a row was just deemed the number one party school in the world um unfortunately if you look at the metrics of how they measured that it's in alcohol sales per person Ooh. I'm like, that's not, so you, what, that's how you measure how fun a party is. Like we have, you know, we don't even really serve alcohol. If we do serve alcohol at our events, uh, it's usually like meta margaritas and like, you know, creative cocktails and, and really like low alcohol things <laughs> for the people that, creative you know, cocktails. Have, yeah, exactly. Cause people come, you know, like for example, Beauty in the Backyard, you mentioned our annual uh, creative arts retreat. It's like a festival, but way more inclusive and, and more of an, a facilitated experience. That's why we call it a retreat. But uh, frat frat kids will come, you know, and with with like thirty racks in their hands and leave with like pashminas on. It's like all worked <laughs> out. <laughs> it's great. I mean, like, um, and but no shame to Greek life, uh, you know. Um, yeah, it's a stepping our, some, stone some, on the path for people. I mean, a lot of people well, go through that experience just to realize, oh, this isn't really me. Well, also, I was just going to say, like the original Greek life's uh, Kappa Sig, I think Kappa Sig, like Leonardo da Vinci was was a, a brother. And these uh, fraternities, if you look at the history, and many of the fraternities are still taught this history, but they were brotherhoods to bring people together against tyrannical governments and to protect the people. And um, and that's the history. And I think that's great. I think that's amazing. I actually uh, admire and respect uh, the traditional Greek life for that reason. I didn't know that. That's actually, I'm, I'm all about that. Yeah. Protect exactly. The which, from the that's, tyranny. that's yeah, exactly. That's why I say like, we're kind of the meta houses are like holistic frat house, you know, and, 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 you know, people of all genders and people of all colors and, and walks of life are, are welcome to come to our events um, and stuff like that. And then we have more exclusive events for our community kind of on the low key. So um, we have, and then beauty in the backyard and other events throughout the year that are open to the public. And then we have some more, like we call them uh, manifestation, medium of the mind events and stuff like that, where kind of just, you only really hear about if you're, if you uh, become part of our community. 
And that's, we really pride ourselves in being able to provide opportunities and value um, to our community members, because that's just what we really care about is helping people uh, self-actualize and uh, realize their potential, basically. So... Yeah. <laughs> awesome, yeah. That's, I mean, that's why I even make this podcast. It's all about the self actualization and mm-hmm. realizing your potential isn't something that you achieve one day because you made something or you accomplished something. Realizing your potential literally just means realizing you have infinite potential and then acting like it. <laughs> right. And that's right. an everyday thing. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, just to like, touch on the focus of what we're doing, essentially. And we kind of talked about how people are coming together and making those friendships. It's, it's kind of a twofold problem. Um, the most obvious, well, I mean, it's debatable, but there's <laughs> the most uh, obvious to a human to understand in terms of our lives is that everybody is connected virtually, but we're all disconnected personally. We've lost a lot of our interpersonal communication skills. And uh, I don't know about you, when I was in middle school, uh, I didn't have a cell phone. And when we played like spin the bottle or something at a party and it got awkward, you just dealt with it. Like you figured it out kind of. And now if it's an awkward situation or whatever, kids, you know, young children can now just temporarily escape from this reality and go into the ethereal world by just pulling up Instagram or Facebook or whatever. Um, apps on their phone and just like disassociate with reality. So yeah, anyways, there's a lot of different problems here, but that's the, that's the one about connection. And then the reason why we are a B Corp, a benefit corporation is because unlike a nonprofit and we're somewhere in the middle between a nonprofit and just like a for-profit S Corp or C Corp or whatever like that, a B Corp is something relatively new and it stands for a public benefit corporation. And, uh, similar to Tom's shoes. They donate, you know, shoes, every pair of uh, shoes that's sold, they send one to third world country. Every event that we host, we partner with a different environmental nonprofit or sustainable initiative and donate 15% to uh, different nonprofits to highlight all of the amazing groups that are doing good stuff. Like we're not the best at planting trees or saving coral reefs. We're just really good at bringing people together and getting people hype about holistic health and saving the environment and stuff. So you know, no single use plastics. We usually only serve plant-based foods. We have um, holistic vendors, healers. We do Reiki, Tantra. I mean, we teach organic gardening, meditation, yoga. And then we have like bass music and, and dance parties and like, you know, so we have it all. And, uh, but, but the idea of the second problem is that the earth is under stress. And I say the second problem really because in, in, in order of what people care about. And unfortunately, it's the truth that people for the most part care most about making more money or like bettering their lives in some way, saving time and then, and then saving the whales or saving the earth. You know, that's kind of the hierarchy of our ego and our minds. So I say that's the second problem, but really it's like our main focus is, is, is the planet. I mean, you saw our logo is the heart shaped earth and our whole uh, mission statement is to connect and inspire a meta-driven community to live more sustainably through these transformational experiences that we're creating. And sustainable doesn't just mean recycle and like, you know, use less. It's it's sustainable relationships, it's sustainable mindset, sustainable business practices. I mean, it, the word sustainable is it's not just a buzzword. Uh, we we're moving towards the word regenerative, actually. Um, instead of just like sustaining, like we're just like staying alive. We want to plant more trees and we want to inspire new growth. And that's more regenerative than just sustaining. Um, but we're, we're, we're going through some, some amazing growth right now. So we'll see where that leads. Man. I love it. <laughs> I Thank love it. I'm, I'm really aligned with your mission personally. I'm sure the audience is too. Bless. Thank you. And I think it's really important whenever we're looking at the big picture, because even though we tend to prioritize stuff, like you said, um, self needs before, you know, the needs of the planet or our society mm-hmm. or community, the, the tyrannical controllers, if you will, they have a, had a game plan for a long time, which is to get people so freaked out and scared about problems in society or problems with the environment or whatever doom doomsday scenario is cooked up by a religion or by a government uh, to get everyone in fear. 
the divide and conquer. The goal, yeah, is first of all, cause people to like blame each other for the problems right. instead of look, pointing the finger back to themselves and saying, well, what am I doing in my lifestyle that's unsustainable? And then yeah. what, what inevitably will end up happening if we don't make this shift on the interpersonal level, like you're saying, is that the government will then come out and say, well, because you filthy people are destroying the environment and all that, we've got to pass all these laws and take away a bunch of your freedoms because it's your fault that the earth is being polluted. When, uh, to be quite frank about it, the governments and militaries of the world are far and by far and away the largest polluters of any sort. So when and big, big business, honestly, I mean, if you're talking about government, um, well, they're basically the same the thing. <laughs> They're very close. Yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> so when we have a bunch of people like screaming in the streets about uh, the hashtag extinction rebellion or, or th things like that, that isn't actually making any changes that solve the problem. It's just yeah. like a big sort of uh, yeah. at, at best, it's sort of like a time waster. I mean, bringing awareness to a problem is is great, but the the best thing to bring awareness to is our personal connection to whatever a problem might be. And when it comes to getting our footprint on the earth to be regenerative instead of destructive is it's going to require that we personally change the way we eat, change the way that we, what we buy, what we shop for, no top down rules or laws will fix that. People will just go around the laws anyway, like has always been done. So I like the emphasis on the the grassroots, bringing people together, mm. hel helping heal them on the their personal relationship level, and that also is exposing them to ideas that they can implement in their own life. Whether it's going plant based or yeah. quitting yeah. single use plastic in their own life, I mean, it, these are all small steps that we yep. each have to take in succession, when no one can like take those steps for you, and no one can solve the problem of the environment for you uh, mm. no, no rulers or, or laws can so uh, right. i'm i'm really interested in your events i wish that i lived closer because it <laughs> would definitely be the type of thing i'd be going to i love the anything that brings the magic of like the music festival and transformational festival community from mm. that world to the real world quote unquote that's what i'm yeah. all about and it sounds like you're doing that we're the disassociation that you're talking about that we that people are falling prey to, you know, the extreme gravity of the pool to pick up the phone and look at it, even when you're just sitting at a stoplight for two two seconds. I mean, it's it's always it's always there, and uh, we can heal the disassociation symptoms, which are that we have to come together in big events by making our daily life full of these small connections and that's the that's the real transformation if you ask me i agree i agree completely i mean you talked about top down and, and stuff like that like policy for example for politicians and business laws have a tremendous tremendous value however when it's run so much like there's so much greed and so like people for the most part i mean when everybody's struggling financially it's like they're going to take the cheaper option but when we can show them everyone that it's actually cheaper to like grow your own food in a garden, like in a greenhouse, it, you know, it's actually not as hard as people think. I mean, that's what we teach is like applicable um, knowledge. I mean, you could think of us as like, I mean, I don't want to say like school, but like you come to our events and you weren't expecting to learn and you like leave with very tangible uh, information that you can apply to your life. And um, uh, I'll just touch a little bit on and how we're doing like futuristic stuff. So we, we actually have a, a, a um, cryptocurrency, a token that is sort of like a Chuck E. Cheese token. You can think of it <laughs> as like, it's, it's for now, it's uh, sort of a funny money and we incentivize participation. So by coming to a yoga class or showing up to meditation or like, you know, we have, uh, we do scavenger hunts, uh, we call them meta quests and we have different activities and, uh, bonus things that people can actually earn the tokens. I actually have one of the original um, meta wallets. It's a paper wallet. It looks like this. Put my finger on there. See, actually this, you, you can send me tokens if you're watching this. <laughs> <laughs> so it's got, this is the original one. And then I'll put my finger on the code there back there. But 
Yeah. So basically the idea is like incentivizing participation um, because there's a lot of people that come to our events. Um, a lot of people are actually suffering from anxiety, uh, depression, you know, these sort of mental health th- like concepts. Um, now, just side note, it's not always our fault. There's a lot of external factors like the food, like our water, like the uh, Wi-Fi and 5G now, which is should be banned in my opinion, like they did in Israel and Japan. Actually, Israel made 5G and they banned it. So, um, yeah, that there's tells a, you there's something. A, <laughs> there's a lot, exactly. So people, right, and so people want to make friendships. We have this game called Connection Bingo. It's exactly what you think it is. Bingo card. There's like activities like high five four people in two seconds. I mean, silly things like that. It's like, oh, I can do that. And then you like try to do it. And you're like, wait, I can't do that. You have to talk to people. You're like, hey, can I, can you stand there? Like I, I'm doing this thing. You know, one of them is uh, guess somebody news name basically. And so it takes like 10, 15 minutes with you and that person. And then by the end of that experience, it, you get rewarded for it. And you can use those tokens uh, to eventually buy um, tickets to our events you can go to exclusive like secret sound bath in the middle of the night in the middle of the woods somewhere uh, or like buy merchandise. Like we have, um, I'm wearing my maker's pack right now. This is uh, this is our symbol and this is hemp. It's a fanny pack. We call them maker's packs. Uh, it's made of hemp. So it's sustainable and you'll be able to use tokens to buy stuff like that. But um, anyway, so the idea is like a lot of people are on the fence about like, Oh, should I go talk to him or her or them? And uh, just, you know, have a game like a connection bingo where you have an excuse to like go actually talk to that person it gives people a reason like oh like yeah hey what's up i'm just like doing this thing you know and uh and people feel good about it and it's it's amazing to see how many people actually uh play our our games it's pretty pretty fun (laughs) yeah and if you get enough experience (laughs) points from the quest then you'll level up to the point where you no longer you get like a special talent point that gives you immunity to social anxiety and you just like yes. go start talking to people in the grocery store and shit. Yes. <laughs> It'll no, happen. I mean, it gives you real, it gives you real social experience, like tangible skills. Um, you know, yeah, I can talk so much about that. Honestly. Oh, that's such a good idea. I mean, I'm just impressed with the scope of the project. Like that's what's blowing my mind more than anything. You're covering so Thank many you. bases with this, uh, you're really thinking it through and it sounds like you have a good team of, uh, of people Amazing to team. work with. And Amazing team. I'm a little jealous that we don't have an organization like that where I'm at. <laughs> well, we're growing, we're growing. And actually we can talk after this about expanding Metacreative to, to create different chapters. We're really close to having this model finalized where um, anyone can, you know, start a, a chapter in their city and have the support of our organization behind them. Resources, instructions, connections, you know, um, a game plan on how to reach out to venues, how to bring people together and that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, we're, we're working on it. I mean, we've had events from DC to Boston, uh, and we've had events in Belize and then Australia and New Zealand. So, um, I mean, we have the internet and whenever we travel, you know, it's, it's, uh, you can bring people together anywhere really. So don't be jealous. Look forward to, <laughs> to the collaboration. Definitely. I mean, people it's drove an admiration from Maine. kind of jealousy for sure. <laughs> Pe- yeah. People drove from Maine, California and Florida to come to Beauty in the Backyard this year, which is on the East Coast in, in Maryland. So, I mean, pe- you know, people are driving from right now, everybody, everywhere in the United States to come. Um, we've been doing events for four years, like I said, but it's only our second year of Beauty in the Backyard. And this year was amazing. I mean, absolutely just, it, I'm just blown out of the water. Um, our team is amazing. And, uh, yeah, I could talk so much about that. <laughs> like our, our, uh, the way we bring people onto the team is a, is a really different than most, uh, companies or organizations for that matter. Um, we, most of us are, are just super passionate about this, uh, project that we're working on. So when we kind of wait for people to step up and ask to get involved. And when they do, we ask them three questions. The first question is, what kind of work are you good at? And that's like the typical, they're like, oh, I'm good at this or that. And then they're like, okay, second question, what kind of work do you enjoy? And they're a little taken back by that. Well, I'm glad that you asked. I actually really enjoy this or that. And then the third question is, okay, now what fires, like, what are you fired up about? Like, 
what are you stoked on? And they're just, what? Like never expected to be answered, you know, asked those questions. And then based on their answers, if we have a position uh, that suits them and their personality types and their skill, you know, whatever they're good at, then, um, then it aligns. And we, we ask if they want to be you know, give them that opportunity. So pretty much everybody that's working, like we have a team of 12 developers, you know, coding and um, helping with all sorts of different things in our marketing and, you know, just everybody is working on something that they, that they enjoy doing. So that's, that's one of the main reasons we've been able to have been doing this for so long. Like we're not rich, we're, we're not making a lot of money. It's not really about that for us, but um, yeah, we, uh, we are manifesting more finances because we're realizing how important it is to be able to purchase land and, and do the things that we want to do. Um, so we're really getting serious about, um, you know, our Patreon page and, um, you know, getting our, uh, you know, apparel and, and that sort of thing and providing value um, to the community so that we can generate more income to be able to continue doing these events. So, yeah. Super awesome, man. I have a, let's see, this question is, I think, probably the best one I could come up with for the time we have left. And sure, it's what would you say to somebody, you know, maybe early in college or just in college or even graduated from college that has the same type of mindset as what we're talking about, but doesn't see any kind of community that they can Mm. integrate with that's already there in their area. Like what would you say to that person who wants to create something like meta or be involved with meta even Mm. in without any where to start? They don't know where to start. Like, what do you got? That's a great question. Um, I mean, I could talk about, well, first and foremost, I, I think like meditating on desire, like what is the goal? Um, a lot of people live unfulfilled lives because we had never take the time to define what fulfillment means to us. And success is in a multiple different categories, like career, you know, finances, and then you've got physical and health and you've got relationships and fun and things like that that um, can be defined. And and when we take the time to figure out what we actually want, we might realize that it's closer than we would would have ever imagined. Um, I know for me here at University of Delaware, number one party school last year based on alcohol sales, I was having a hard time finding these people, these, these forward thinking people that, you know, like doing yoga and eating plant-based foods and stuff. And, you know, there's a few, but it's, it it felt so difficult to like try to actually hang out with these people, get them to. So I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to keep investing all my time into doing these events and like building something. Cause if it's not there, if you don't see it, you got to make it. And, um, I know that there are more communities popping up, more people are getting interested in crystals and holistic health and essential oils and clean energy, solar and stuff like that. And uh, I would say, check out meetup.com, look up, you know, Facebook groups, events, just be involved, you know, like I would say, you know, do a couple push-ups, and maybe do some yoga and go outside, go to your main street and, and just talk to people, ask, ask for what you want, you know closed mouths don't get, don't get fed. And, um, you gotta, you gotta really put it out there, put your intentions out there and be, be open and willing to receive, you know, be, be willing and open to receive that, that abundance. And, um, so that's just like on a personal level, that's, that's what we do. Like, for example, when my co-founder Dylan goes to Bailey's or when he was in New Zealand, he didn't really know that that many people at all, but having this, this idea of meta, and what it means and how we've seen it bring communities together. I mean, the, the, the symbol, the heart shaped earth is pretty unanimous. Um, and so having that, that belief of like bringing people together, knowing the magic that happens from it and just like, just going out there and just getting after it. Um, so, and, and if there's anyone listening to this, that, that wants to do that and would like some tips or maybe want to connect with us. I mean, we have a lot of connections as well in different States, different countries, different cities, reach out to me. I'm, I'm happy to help connect. I mean, that's like one of my best skills uh, is, is helping connect people. I'm not the best, you know, at, 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 you know, anything really. I'm just really good at bringing experts together and providing opportunities for people. And like I told you before, we work on this model to help 
um, spread meta to, to the whole world. And so um, we're close to that. And if anybody wants to get involved with that, totally reach out. We're, we're happy to, to collaborate. And it's always collaboration. We never, you know, we don't even really care about like having fame. Honestly, we care about the, the impact, you know, people come to us with tears in their eyes, like talking about how, you know, they, they met the love of their life or, you know, that they, they had this transformation of experience. They're finally ready. Like, they were finally able to let go of 40 years worth of trauma. And like just those stories are so impactful to us. Um, there's really no way that we could give up after hearing stories like that. <laughs> so cool. Man. So cool. Yeah, Thank you. You sounds like you're creating some awesome spaces and filling it up with creative individuals, art, music, mm. stuff that's not going to be found at Walmart or whatever. <laughs> and. <laughs> What I would say to just as an addendum to your advice is by doing something that you find fun or interesting and finding the community around you that's already doing something related to that, like that's where you'll meet the people. So, you know, we, we talked about alcohol a lot in this, but you're not likely to meet that perfect individual that is the exact symmetrical mirror for what it is that you're trying to achieve. That's going to, you know, that you're going to assist each other and start building the community starts with the first yep. person that, yep. you know, you yep. and somebody else, but you're not going to meet that person out at like the bar. Probably I, you I might, go- but you probably won't. Yeah. I have a great, super quick story just to touch on that a little bit. Like two weeks ago, actually, I guess so, two weekends ago, um, I got offered to go to see one of my favorite musical artists play music at a, you know, very close to my house in Baltimore for really cheap. Actually, I was super stoked on it. And then I got invited to go to this permaculture, like retreat, perma blitz thing was all volunteers coming to help, you know, clean up the garden and work on permaculture and stuff. Excuse me. And since one of our goals is to build these like sustainable villages, these retreat centers, community centers out, out in the, you know, uh, rural areas, I was like, okay. And it, it looked like a really small event, like 10, 20 people, maybe it ended up being a, a couple more people than that. But I was like, what's the trade-off? Do I go hang out with the people that I really want to hang out with and see the music that I love or like go to a place I've never been with people that I don't know, but that are working on something that I'm interested in. So what do you think I did? I was like, you know what? It's probably makes more sense to go to the retreat center. We drove two hours to get there and ended up meeting amazing, beautiful people. I got gifted this flower of life, organite pendant with uh, silver and gold and copper and stuff like that. And just meeting such great people. So whatever you want to do, I would say, imagine where are these people that you want to connect with? Maybe they're at the yoga classes. Maybe they're at like the coffee shop. Maybe, you know, maybe they're not at the bar, you know, think about like where these people and where these energies reside. Just put yourself in that environment. Oh yeah. And there's bound to be wherever you are, there's bound to be like permaculture stuff going on somewhere outside of town. (laughs) That's something that, and they're always looking for more people to teach and bring, bring in to help assist with work or whatever. So this is awesome, but we're at, we're past the time, man. We got to let you go. Thank you, Chance. I really appreciate that, man. I'm just checking out your, your banner. Imagine something new. Like, yeah, we, we definitely, entrepreneurship is solving problems. And that's something about innovation is doing something new. Actually, University of Delaware's motto is dare to be first. So it's kind of synchronistic. Like, we pitch to people in suits and ties and they're looking at us like, what is a party? And it just doesn't make sense to a lot of people. So we're doing something radically different. It seems like you're aligned with that. So I appreciate you and, uh, and, and this podcast and um, super stoked and uh, hope to collaborate soon in the future, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I'm sure we will. I'm, I'm going to practically guarantee we'll meet in real life at some point too. So yes, I would love that. <laughs> It'll happen. I would love that. Yeah. And I've got a lot to learn from what you guys are doing. I'm, a perpetual lone wolf type. Like I've never brought anyone else in to assist with any element of what I'm doing here. And I'm sure Mm. that I could go farther and faster together. So. Well, um, let me know how I can help. I'm I'm always willing to help in any (laughs) way that I can. Yeah. Cool. Well, you know, you'll, you'll help by being on the show and posting it to your network and we'll cross pollinate because I'm sure that we've got listeners to Interverse that are probably up on your coast and might want to come to your. Yeah, I was gonna say all ships rise with the rising tides. When you succeed, I succeed. When I succeed, you succeed. We all win together. Yeah, man, that's the model that we're moving <laughs> to for sure. And a lot of us are already on it. So thanks for being here with us, everyone. Check out 
metacreative.world if that's cor- that's yes. correct yeah yeah m m e t t a creative.world and <laughs> is there anywhere they can find your music oh me personally my yeah. uh so yeah uh if you want to go to my instagram uh lunar sundance um also if you're interested in like sonic geometry and sound healing and meditation music that's like my passion yeah uh, you know my my true like calling it i feel like and that's uh the musical plant that world and then you can see but you know most people don't get hype about meditation music so that's why i like do hip hop and I make, you know, live jams. And well, they, you know, like you gotta that. have fun too. There's both. Exactly. I mean, I think <laughs> that that kind of ambient relaxing music is fun because I can do fun stuff while I'm listening to it and not be yeah. distracted, yeah. but I also like music that is so outrageous. I have to stop what I'm doing and, and move around. So, Oh yeah. yeah. Trust me. We have all of it. I love that. <laughs> awesome. Well, it's been a blast. I, it flew by. I mean, we definitely got to do this again. There's a lot of directions that we could go. And, uh, yeah, we're super aligned. Thanks a lot, Davis. It's been real. Cool.